Hello! <laughs> it has been so long. Welcome to new viewers. Welcome back to the long time viewers who have been oh so patient with me while it's been a year plus, I think, of no podcasting. So, welcome to the Knitted Cupcake Podcast. My name is Lacey. I'm the host of this podcast. Um, I reside in Eastern Oregon and I'm a knitter. <laughs> it's been so long since I've done this and I'm rusty. And I know I'm rusty because I recorded this episode last night and then I proceeded to accidentally delete the entire thing. <clears throat> so, we're trying again. <laughs> um, yeah, let's do this thing. Um, what am I wearing? It's gonna be awkward, guys. I'm just forewarning you. This is my Comfort Fade Cardi by Andrea Mowry, and I knit this all out of So Happy Jane in her DK base, and mm, yep, I can't tell you all the colors except for the fact that the color up here and the very edge of my cuff is her Agate Beach color, which is mm, so good. I've got a sweater qu quantity in fingering weight yarn that is just waiting to be knit as with many other of my yarns. You can probably tell, if you've been around for a while, that my setup looks a little different. My cabinet is very empty. Um, the shelf is new and that's because uh, my fiance and I recently bought a house over the summer and we're in my new office. <laughs> so I haven't unpacked my yarn yet just because I've been trying to um, work through <laughs> A lot of the whips that you see here I've had some success with that but I think that I will be unpacking my yarn here relatively soon um, much sooner than I can get through all of this over here so this will get filled up as well so we will have a very full background here <laughs> um, yeah so let's I'm, I really, I'm not going to go through everything I finished in the last year because that would be ridiculous. So I just kind of pulled some of the things that have uh, popped off my needles in the last month or so. And we'll start with that. So the first thing I'd like to share are my Desert Rooster Dye Work socks for the month of September. I had to think about what month we were in right now. <laughs> and these are the morning mimosa socks oh awesome you can see my end i'm really bad at weaving in my end right away and the pattern is mahogany run by kay litton of crazy sock lady designs and podcast and yeah i love kay's patterns i love desert risa dye work yarns this is my second year participating in her year-long knit along um it's where Every month you knit a pair of socks of hers and they have to be entirely from her yarn. She does sell minis, um, so you can do a contrasting mini if you so choose. Um, you just have to start and finish the sock within the month, post it in her Ravelry group, and then each quarter she has different uh, prizes that you are then eligible for. So at the end of it all, you could have two different 30% discount coupons for her shop two free skeins of yarn and one of those is an exclusive if you complete all 12 months. So it's a really fun knit along to participate in. Like I said, it's my second year doing that. Not sure if I'm going to do it next year. I think I've got the yarn for it, but um, I have a lot of other beautiful sock yarn in my stash that I'd like to turn into socks. So I may take a year off from participating in the Desert Rose of Dye Work knit along and just let myself have a year of knitting garments and shawls or other socks. So um, it's a great knit along. Join in if you want next year start getting some of her yarns. And yeah, so there's finish up at number one. 
finished object number two um, relates to the current, well, doesn't really relate to it, but I was inspired to finish this with Stephen West's newest, latest MCAL that is going on and happening right now. I am participating in that, and that will be the very last thing I show today. Um, but this is last year's MCAL, and I, I mean, I can only go back so far. But this is the Starflake, and it is big, and I actually made the smaller version. Um, this brown edge right here could have potentially been twice as wide, and I chose not to do that because I just wanted it off my needles, and I knew that even at the small size, this would be plenty big. So, I mean... I am a lot of person to wrap up in a shawl, and I love a big shawl. I don't want any tiny little shawlettes. They don't work so well for me. So I knew the smaller, the smaller size would work for me. So this is the Starflake. Um, I've got Boris down on the ground in front of me. So I'll just take this off to show you the colors. So the pinky color is Legacy Fiber Arts in their Cozy Toes, so their cashmere base, in a one-of-a-kind colorway. And then the brown is Volumiza, I think? Um, a German yarn. Um, they come in 150 gram skeins, and they are those skeins are twisted so tightly, you could use them as a weapon. <laughs> they are insane. But I just, I really love the warm tones of this. I'm really leaning into my warm tone, jewel tone, fall colors that I love to wear year round. Um, so this really fed into that beautifully, um, as will this year's Slip Stravaganza. So this is a recent FO. I finished this the week before this year's MCAL started. So it was on the needles for quite a long time. But now it's off. It just needs to have ends woven in and blocked. It will happen eventually. <laughs> Next up is another Stephen West pattern. Again, when you are prepping for MCAL season, it is best to warm up with all of the West Knits patterns. Again, this is a pattern that has been on the needles for over a year, I think. Um, and this is his Jigshaw Puzzle shawl. I mean, it's another massive, I mean, it's huge, huge. And this is fingering weight held double, um, except for these pink sections is fingering weight in a mohair. Um, and I really loved this pattern because you pick your six skeins and then you're contrasting, um, skein with mohair. And he tells you exactly when to pair all of the different skeins together. And as much as I love to work my creative self and play with color, sometimes having somebody else tell me what to do is really nice. So I really enjoyed that I didn't have to think about anything. And I love his modular designs. I think on the back of my chair, you're not going to be able to see it, but I have um, my Vertices Unite, which is another shawl by Stephen West and is one of my go-to favorite shawls <laughs> ever of all time. Uh, so his modular designs, the fact that it was fingering weight held double makes and garter, so it's just squishy and awesome. I had it probably 60% of the way done, and then I put it down for over a year, and then I picked it back up and finished it in a couple days. Well, finished because I still need to add the pink mohair eye cord edge. So we're not quite done yet, but if I wanted to, I could show off the fringe with all the ends and wear it out. So, and I do wear it around my house as kind of a blanket shawl. Um, while I'm working, I'll have it on my lap. In fact, I may have it on my lap right now because it is cold in my house, which is perfect because I can wrap up and all of my woolly goodness. So again, a fantastic pattern. Um, if you are in need of a schlanket full of mindless knitting, 10 out of 10 recommend 
recommend <laughs> recommend the jigsaw puzzle by Stephen West um, so in the realm of finished recent finished objects that's kind of it that's that's done I've cast on itis is still something that I am struggling with and battling daily um, so I have a lot of started projects a lot of whips in here <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know what? I'm embracing it. It is what it is, and I'm knitting what's ma what makes me happy, so. Especially during times like this, quarantine, COVID, all of that, knitting what makes you happy is all that matters, so. You do you boo. Okay, I do have a hoe, and that is my, <clears throat> sorry my October Desert Vista, De Desert Vista, not Desert Vista, Desert Vista Dye Work Sock. Um, oh, I didn't look up the name of this beforehand, but I'll do that and have it down below. Um, it's Harris Tweed or Harrisville Sock or something like that, um, is the pattern and it is a free pattern and I want to say it is like blueberry waffle but for fingering white yarn so you don't have to do any of the math which I don't think the math is very intense <laughs> um but that yarn that I'm using again does it Rista Dye Works in her big magic colorway and um a yellow contrasting heel and toe of hers as well um yeah I did do a German short row heel and the mini heel flap and gusset from Min from Mina Phillip. I have found um, really especially over the last year um, that that heel with generally 68 stitches works best for my foot. It's what fits across my instep really nicely without too much pulling. Um, so yeah, a really fun pattern. Again, really great yarn to work with. She's got hundreds of colors. She um, releases them monthly. So you follow her on Instagram and you'll see um, old color collections pop up as well as every month. She's always coming out with new colors as well. I don't know how Susan does it, but she does it and it's amazing. So that's the one finished sock. Um, and here is what I've got from the current second sock, which is not a whole lot, but it's no sock. I can't have second sock syndrome with this knit along, which is also really nice. So, um, I am doing this top down. I did the, um, a German twisted cast on, gives it a little extra stretch to get over my heel. And yeah, so there is my hoe. We will continue on with socks. And um, I am knitting a pair of Christmas socks. Um, the morning mimosa sock that I finished last month are Christmas socks and will be part of my um, festive box of socks. Um, I think that makes pair... What do I have going on here? I'm all tangled and twisted with my yarn. Um, I do, I think I've got six or seven pairs of festive socks right now. I would love to have 25. Um, and that's another reason why I think I'm going to take a break from the Desert Vista Dye Works Knit Along is because then I can maybe have a year of knitting nothing but Christmas socks. Um, and it's fun because as much as I love just some traditional Christmas colors, as you'll see with this guy. Um, I don't always have to have red and green or blue, and, you know. I can do something like this, which is a bit more unconventional, yet still Christmas, because it was Christmas inspired. So this is, smells like Christmas, I smell Christmas. Let's pop out the tag, because I should know this. It smells like, it smells like Christmas. <laughs> I should know that. Um, but this is from Legacy Fiber Arts, and this is on their Steel Toes Base, 
which I believe is a 7525 uh, merino nylon. And I can't remember the name of this pattern. I could probably look it up, but I don't want to do that. It will be down here. Um, but I know the grocery girls recently, um, eh, a podcast or two ago, um, had this pattern and some yarn as a giveaway. And as, as soon as I saw the pattern, I knew I wanted to pair it with this yarn. This is unfortunately not available from Legacy Fiber Arts. It was their Christmas collection last year, um, inspired by the new animated Grinch movie. Um, but I just, I thought the really, the kind of wavy garter ridges and the wovenness just reminded me of Dr. Seuss. It was very whimsical. Um, so to pair it with a Dr. Seuss inspired yarn, uh, uh, um, works really well. And again, I, Sue is an amazing dyer. I don't, the evenness of her speckles <laughs> throughout this whole skein blows my mind. And there's no pooling at all. Um, the colors are just gorgeous and bright and vibrant. Um, she's a magician. Sue is a magician. And when Chelsea dies, Chelsea is also a magician. Um, it is in their blood. So um, if you don't know Legacy Fiber Arts, they do. They're a mother-daughter duo and they have a YouTube channel. Um, and Chelsea also has a Patreon. Chelsea makes. How do I do this every time? Um, this is not good. <laughs> I've just pulled my needle up through my sock. Um, Chelsea makes on Patreon and they're just fantastic women and human beings and go check them out and give them some love and support them because they deserve it because they're just so awesome. So Legacy Fiber Arts, it smells like Christmas and pattern that you've already seen the name of. So that is a Christmas sock that is happening. I am hoping to have that pair done by Christmas this year. That may be other than my Advent skein, which is Schitt's Creek, A Shitty Christmas <laughs> from Kirby Werby, as well as Cozy Knitters annual Advent skein. Those are my two sock as well as up here where you can't see it and it's kind of hiding from myself is a Legacy Fiber Arts Advent that I'm so excited to bust into. So Advent season coming up. I'm trying to wrap up some of these projects so come December I can just dive into my Advent projects. Um, so then, so I've got those two pair of socks currently going. Um, I'll have my October Desert Vista Direct socks finished this month and then I'll do November and December as well. So I've got a lot of knitting to do in December but you know what? That's okay. I also have a wrap that I would love to get done. Um, probably, this probably won't get done until after I'm done with um, the slip extravaganza. But this is the Moving Forward Wrap by Denise Bayron. Um, and I am almost done with my third repeat of five. And this, I mean, if I stretch it, it's my wingspan. Um, so blocked, it would already be reaching my wingspan. Um, and there are still two more full repeats to do. So this is going to be a very long, perfect wrap that I can wrap myself up in, wear it like a scarf. Um, I am using Stress Knits in her Accidental Gemini color. Um, unfortunately, it was just a limited release for her daughter's first birthday, um, where proceeds went to... Oh, I can't remember. I don't think it's the hospital where she was born, but it's... Um, 
not Children's Miracle Network, oh, I can't remember, but every year for her daughter's birthday, she has a fundraiser skein, and this was the first year. So, um, three skeins of this, beautiful, I'm very excited. Mm, I'll be a babushka, and I'm 100% okay with that. Um, yeah, so this is another one I'm hoping to finish and wrap up by the end of this calendar year um try to end 2020 on a positive note with lots of amazing finished objects woolly goods that i can continue to wrap up for the rest of the winter um so i've got that going i also have a sweater that i would like to get off the needles sooner rather than later and I feel like it's possible because it's being knit on size 10 needles so as soon as I have more time to give to the sweater I think it will be finished fairly quickly um and that sweater is the Felix pullover um again Stacy of Stress Knits she had knit the Felix pullover so has, I mean, a million people have knit the Felix pullover. Um, but it was Stacy talking about it that really kind of pushed me to find yarn to use with it. Because it's an Aran weight yarn. And I found this, which is Barocco Mochi. And it is very, I would say similar to Wolf Oak Loft, not. It is not wool folk loft, which is softer than a baby kitten. I mean, it's amazing. And this is soft, but wool folk loft is even softer. This is 37% baby alpaca, 35% nylon, 26% wool, and 2% other fiber. And I think the other fiber are the little colorful, tweedy looking bits that you can see throughout um so that is the yarn and here is where I'm at I'm not super far but this is this was cast on while I had finished the first clue of the MCAL so I had some time didn't really want to work on my wrap had this yarn and I was itching to cast on so this is the beginning of the Felix pullover and you can see the raglan increases are these beautiful eyelet arrows and so those are going to run both the front and the back and the really amazing thing about this yarn is how lightweight it is um holding this feels like nothing at all and having an entire sweater out of this is going to be super warm because of the alpaca um and again like the luff it looks like it is like the chain at nylon tube that the fibers are blown into so it's just the airiest yarn um so i'm super excited to have this in my wardrobe i think Knitting it on the size 10 needles is really going to get me um, through it quickly. Fingers crossed. Um, yeah, I really, I would love, I've got sweaters quantities in multiple sweater quantities in my stash that I would love to get into. And I just, I think I needed something like this that was going to be quick, kind of instant gratification and just beautiful I love the colorful twex the colorful flex against the gray um I think this is really going to kickstart that garment knitting bug here's hoping anyway so again trying to have that completed by the end of 2020 the one final whip I've got going is another legacy fiber art yarn. Wow, I've really got myself tangled up here. <laughs> what is happening? Let's not get the yarn in my coffee, please. Seriously. Oh, 
the joys of I didn't really clean up after podcasting yesterday so I'm just kind of working with the mess that I was left with anyway um again this is a very Stacy stress knits and legacy fiber arts heavy po podcast which I'm okay with because both of those yarns and and all of those women are phenomenal human beings and so I think it was Stacy who had mentioned the classic pearl beanie no classic ribbed beanie pearl beanie ribbed beanie beanie from pearl soho there's the pearl um is kind of the go-to beanie pattern that she uses and I recently knit one for a co-worker who's going through cancer treatment right now and as soon as I be finished that hat I knew I needed to get another one on my needles because it was so much fun to knit and I went into my stash and pulled out these skeins of Legacy Fiber Art Beetlejuice in the Steel Toes base and the Slub base. So this is a DK weight pattern. So I'm holding those two together and getting this really fun textured slubby ribbed hat. And I used a mini from, that just sounded weird, a mini from Legacy Fiber Arts that came with the It Smells Like Christmas yarn that I didn't find until after I was done with the heel of that sock. But again, Sue and her colors, it worked perfectly with Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, and Beetlejuice. So I've got this awesome little ribbed hat that I'm working on as well. So again, this is sitting at my desk for more mindless meeting, knitting, that kind of a thing, because it's just knit, pearl, knit, pearl, knit, pearl, knit, forever. And easy. And the pattern on Pearl Soho is free. So yeah, that is, that is kind of it. Now, Slip Stravaganza, MCAL. If you do not want to be spoiled, look away. Spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. Right now. I will count down. Three, two, one. I'm showing it. Don't get mad at me. I'll let you know when you can look back <laughs> or see it again. Whatever. This is my slip extravaganza. It is getting really crammed on my needles, but this is where we are at. So we've got clue one, bonus clue, and then clue two, which I have this orange and purple section that I'm going to repeat up here and then I'm done. So I'm almost done with clue two. We'll definitely have it done by Friday. Um, yeah, I'm loving it. I'm absolutely loving it. So my main color, can't remember what it is, where I got it, didn't have tags. I started a project with it, threw the tags away, and then ripped that project out. So it feels like it's got cashmere in it. It's very soft, but I really love the autumnal colored flex speckles throughout the skein. And I use that to inspire my other colors. So I have the orange is Spiced Pumpkin from Woolberry Fiber. The navy is I can't remember the color name, but it's from Plucky Knitter. And then the olive green, which is in my bonus clue, as well as this stripe here, is Dirty Martini from So Happy Jane. I've got some color pops going on here. I've got, I think it's a Malabrigo dark. Um, this is paired with my purple, so just leftovers that I had sitting in my stash. The pink um, is a homespun house. I want to even say one of her Christmas colorways. Christmas at Hogwarts maybe. Um, paired with a mohair that I had left over from knitting a hat for my brother's girlfriend last year. So just I went fully from stash on this. I love that I am able to knit this without buying any yarn. 
Um, I love that I'm branching out and using some color pops and some mohair dares. So I'm really excited to see where we go from here. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it'll be interesting to see if we continue with, you know, the shape or if we're going to start picking up and going this way on something. I don't know. I don't know. It's Stephen West. Anything is possible. But as of right now, I love what I've got going on and I'm really excited to see where we go from here. Okay, you can look back. It is safe. I'm done showing my slip extravaganza and I tried not to use too many words to give away what was happening. Um, so yeah, that is, that is pretty much it. Um, I've been doing 30 minutes. It's a great length of a podcast. So yeah, with that, I'm going to wrap it up and I'm going to say again, thank you for coming and watching and spending some time with me. I have no idea how often I'm going to sit down and record a podcast. I don't really want to be on this very strict regimen during this time right now. Um, I don't need a lot of added pressure, especially with work. <laughs> um, I'm a teacher, um, so doing everything online right now takes a lot out of me. So, yeah. Um, the best way to know when I am upload, um, A, follow me on Instagram, the.knitted.cupcake, as well as hitting the like and subscribe button for here um, and hitting the little bell notification that is going to let you know when I po when I upload a new podcast. So Instagram, hitting the bell, both of those will ensure that you know when the next podcast is coming out. So thank you again for joining me. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your week. Um, I hope you have a great safe weekend planned ahead and I will see you next time. Happy knitting. Bye. Oh gosh, so far away. <laughs>